How's it going guys? Welcome back to another JHR review. And if you guys recognize these, you've probably been here since the very beginning where you watch a lot of my videos. I reviewed these within the first week of uh, starting up my YouTube channel. And it just so happens that I've gotten a lot of requests now that the Phase 3 Part 2 has come out. And it just so happens that I got that on my birthday. So without further ado, let's go ahead and move these guys out of the way and show you the final of a very long-running movie series, Thanos Snap. And here we go, the Marvel Cinematic Universe Phase 3 Part 2. And right here it says it comes with Black Panther, Avengers Infinity War, Ant-Man and the Wasp, Captain Marvel, Avengers Endgame, and Spider-Man Far From Home. It also says that this is a six film collection. It comes with collectible art cards and postcards, plus two bonus discs, so that's pretty cool. Before we get into looking at this completely, let's remove this plastic wrap on the side so we can get a good look at the box. All right, I went ahead and removed that plastic wrap. So let's go ahead and uh, zoom in on here a little bit. So we have some familiar heroes here on the front, along with this beautifully detailed and colorful Thanos gauntlet. And if we turn to the side here, we have kind of a, uh, let's go ahead and zoom in on that logo, kind of a, uh, 3D feeling cinematic universe logo with long with some bluish purple kind of a galaxy on the side If we zoom in on the back right here We get a good idea of what's going to come inside And then the same side on this side as well the logo along with it saying cinematic universe so as with all of the other ones, we're just going to grab from the top and slide up. That is very satisfying. And this time we are greeted with Thor, Iron Man, and Captain America. How nice is this? Look how shiny it is, too. It's almost like a holographic Pokemon card. It looks really nice. And then on the side right here, you can kind of see Thor's axe coming through, kind of connecting it into one single picture, which is nice. Seam logo on this side. And then on the back, we have Hawkeye, Hulk, or Bruce Banner and Black Widow. Now let's go ahead and open this up. So right here, as you can see in shiny print, it kind of gives all of the different uh, movies that are in here. But as always, it comes with a very nice little secret pack of stuff that you get to undo, which that's what we're going to do first. This is the cinematic Phase 3 Part 2 posters and whatnot, and it says open immediately. So let's set that down and then move this to the side temporarily. Hopefully we have enough space for this. I made it work when I first started making these videos, so I'm assuming I can do it again. Let's go ahead and slide this out. There we go. Alright, so the first thing we have are the cards right here they come with some very nice art cards so this one's for Black Panther Avengers Infinity War with Thanos Ant-Man and the Wasp Captain Marvel Avengers Endgame Spider-Man Far From Home and, oh man, that one hits home. Ah, we love you 3000 Marvel Studios. That's so nice. I like that. Let's go ahead and move 
move this out of the way. And now we have a collection of the official movie posters. So let's see how well we can get these all opened up to show you guys. So right here we have Black Panther. Very nice. We have, oh yeah, the Infinity War poster. You've probably seen this in the movie theater. I really like the color combinations on this one. This is one of my favorite posters. We have the Ant-Man and the Wasp. Captain Marvel. I also really like the color combinations on here as well. We have Avengers Endgame. Kind of got a little bit darker, kind of the same setup a little bit, but uh, a lot darker as you can see. And then this one should be Spider-Man. Oh, yeah, there we go. Spider-Man Far From Home. Funny story about this is I was at Disneyland with my fiance and we noticed all of these crowds of people around and it was actually because um, Tom Holland and Zendaya were actually there doing an interview, and we were probably about, I'd say, 10 to 15 feet away from them, and we were able to see them pretty up close, which was really awesome, and uh, we got some pictures of them as well. Um, obviously, we couldn't do any meet or greets or anything, but it was actually a day where he dressed up in his Spider-Man suit and walked around Disney, which was really cool. But yeah, cool little uh, story right there. And now finally, let's go ahead and see the disc art. So first of all, we start off with Black Panther. I never like it when my discs are crooked. Uh, sometimes it's too, e too not, not too easy, but too hard to rotate them when they're in there. And then we have Avengers Infinity War. Ant-Man and the Wasp. Captain Marvel. Avengers Endgame, and a bonus content disc, and then Spider-Man Far From Home. And I believe there's another bonus disc right here. And if you see, you can see the uh, Infinity Stones floating in the background on here too. Very nice, very colorful. The only thing I'm not a super big fan of in this one, and this is just personal preference, is that, uh, oh, I'm gonna close that all the way. There we go. All the discs are yellow. Not the biggest fan of the color choice of yellow and purple together, but that could just be my personal preference. But yeah, this has been a long time coming. I've been following these since I was a child, basically, and to have the entire, like, first everything wrap up in such a kind of climactic way, I feel like they really pulled together everything. Um, I really enjoyed it, and uh, it's the end of an era, basically. A lot of the people in the theaters were saying that it feels like uh, part of their childhood had just finished some kind of such a long-running thing, almost like uh, when Harry Potter finished, and I felt that too. Kind of like a solemn yet happy nostal nostalgic feeling. But yeah, back in here we go. And just slides right back in. And with this, we end my series 
of the Marvel Cinematic Universe original. And if there are more box sets in the future, you will see them on my channel. But, uh, yeah. In the link in the description below, I'm going to go ahead and put together a playlist, or maybe in the comments, of my original ones. Um, and then this one in a addition to the playlist, so you guys can check out all those ones as well. But thank you guys so much for watching. And today we have another cloud storage smart camera. Now this is uh, another uh, wireless security camera that I'm going to be testing out. And right here at the bottom it says that it is, if we zoom in right there, it is P2P HD and it also has um, EXIR, which I'm not 100% sure what that is. It says, the right choice for your security camera system. IP surveillance is the highest resolution video security technology available. All right. It says, advanced night vision mode, two-way audio for greeting family, smart motion detection and alarm system, intelligent motion and sound detection. It supports a micro SD card and cloud service. It supports AP hotspot connection and mobile phone remote control. That's cool. So yeah, without further ado, let's go ahead and open this up and see what it's all about. Looks like it has the standard pull tab. And then we're greeted by a little hole to slide it out. Actually, looks like a little accessory kit. We'll check that out in a second. And then it says uh, cloud Wi-Fi camera instruction manual. And then down here, it comes protected in a nice little layer of foam. And then if we set it down, this is what it looks like. I like the shape of this one a lot more than the previous one I reviewed that was just kind of like a box. And if we remove this, we get a good look at what the camera looks like. So that's what it looks like right there. It looks like this is where the speaker is for two-way audio. And then on the side right here, if you want to hook it up through Ethernet, you have the option. And then right next to it is that micro USB. And then on the back, it looks like we have something right there. I'm not too sure what it is. Might be some kind of adjustment. What's really nice about this one, too, is it has a thing for a tripod. So if you wanted to hook this up to a tripod, you could really easily do that, actually. I have a tripod mount right here. As you see, you just have to easily turn it on there. See? It's already attaching. So if you wanted to just put it on a tripod and kind of keep it, you know, not mounted to a wall or things like that, or maybe you just wanted it to be higher up so nobody could, like, you know, get to it, you could definitely do that too. Plus there's tons of different types of tripod mounts. What my camera's on right now is actually a clip-on tripod mount for my desk. So tons of different options right there. Let's go ahead and set that to the side. Now let's go ahead and look at this box right here. Looks as though it comes with some hollow wall anchors, a USB charging dock, or little thing to go on the wall. It comes with a thing right here that I believe slides into the bottom of these two pegs. Yeah, right there. And then you slide it in, and then you mount with the screws into the wall, or maybe into, um, maybe like a, a desk or something, just so it doesn't fall off, so you can have it to where it uh, is more safe. Because I don't know how often, you know, you drop these if they'd even survive one fall. And then it comes with a nice long micro USB. So, yeah. I'm going to go ahead and get this connected to my phone and then show you some footage of what it looks like. So, go ahead and stay tuned. All right, so I got the camera all set up and the app open. Pretty simple process, very similar to the uh, last one. So let's go ahead and move this over here. So what I really like about this one is when you tap on the screen, you get this layout, and you actually have a joystick on here rather than just swiping. 
So you just use it like a joystick and you can move it left and right. And then you can also move it up. And you can move it down. So it still has about 360 degrees of movement. So you'll be able to kind of do whatever you need to do. You know, if you want to have it in your backyard or check on your cats, or maybe you want to use it as a baby monitor, um, it works really well. And I think that the uh, little operating system on here with the little toggly thing, the little joystick makes it a lot easier to move around compared to the last one that I tried out. Though I like the other one too. Um, it, it's kind of hard because they're very similar in the way that they perform and also in visual dexterity. But I really do like the little joystick because the other one it was kind of hard to gauge whether or not you were like moving the thing because there was a little bit input lag. But this you get to see like, you know, that's definitely the direction you're pulling. And if you want to take it off of full screen, you can go back like that. There we go. You have a bunch of other options too, so you can record, you can create a cloud album, and then you can also set like areas to where I believe it'll record um, like motion and stuff so that you can actually have it to where um, you'll get notifications on your phone if something like suspicious happens or something like that. But yeah, I think this is a really nice camera right here. And I definitely would suggest checking it out. I'm going to go ahead and put it in the link in the description below. But tell me what you guys think. But yeah, one other thing I wanted to kind of show you guys before we end the video is that if you move the camera up right here, this is actually the slot that you can put in your micro SD card. And there's also a reset switch right there, so that's really handy. Pretty cool, nice and hidden. You don't even see it when it's like actually doing its thing. Very nice and discreet. I love that kind of engineering. But yeah, and today we're going to be looking at these Dreams Come True ZT Digital Sports Headphones. Now if we turn to the back right here, first of all I want to say I really like the premium kind of gloss that they have on the front. This is matte and this is like a nice gloss coating. Let's go ahead and turn that around. If we zoom in here at the bottom real quick, we can see that it is an arc design. It has built-in wireless microphone, waterproof and sweat resistant. You can control your music and the calls via the button. And it says high fidelity wireless music. It says the frequency response is 2.402 or, or dash 4.40 gigahertz. Or was that 80 gigahertz? Oh, it's a little bit small. And uh, yeah, so that's the frequency right there. I'm not really sure um, how that ties into it. I think it's just the latency, um, or the frequency response, I guess they would call it. But, um, it seems good to me. We'll, we'll test it out. <laughs> let's go ahead and lay this flat, and let's just slide this top box portion off. There we go. All right. Move that to the side. And then here are the headphones. They're kind of in this nice little foam encasing. Let's go ahead and pop these out now. They have a very um, flexible kind of silicone feel to them, which is nice because if you're going to have these around your neck all the time, you don't want them to be super tough and rigid, you know? Let's just pop that. Oh, it looks as though the extra wiring is underneath the foam portion. And then let's just take a look right here to see if there's anything underneath. And, oh, oh, I was not expecting that. That's nice. Look at this, guys. It comes with its own little leather bag that you can keep them in to keep them uh, nice and safe. And if you look on the inside right here, has a softer material too. So that's cool. Let's go ahead and pull these out real quick just to see what we got before we inspect the headphones. So this is their contact card. Looks as though it folds up like this so you could put it on your desk or something like that. It's kind of a cute idea. And then it comes with this little bag of goodies. Let's go ahead and open this up. Every five seconds. Well, let's go ahead. No. <laughs> 
It's my video progression sentence. So right here we have a micro USB to charge the headphones. Reasonably long. And then I'm assuming these are different sizes. Yeah, wow, there's a lot of them in here. I wonder what these things are. All those little clips. Let's go ahead and zoom in on that. So it comes with these little clips in here that are used to cable manage, I believe. And then we also have these adjustable um, little inserts. They go into the uh, end of the headphones right here if you have like a bigger like inner ear area so that they will fit better. And then we have another bag of them too. A lot of different sizes for a lot of different ear shapes, really small ones with like a little wider point. Uh, point. <laughs> and then uh, some of these larger ones too. And I think that's it. I think there might be one more thing inside of here. Yeah, we have a little uh, instruction booklet probably for how to pair it. Sorry if my light's a little wonky. I'm getting used to my new lighting setup. So here is the instruction booklet. Basically, uh, the simple instructions, you know, hold down the button most likely to start pairing to your phone and then, you know, plug it in and charge it. So let's go ahead and set that to the side along with all these guys. So here are the headphones themselves. So it has kind of like a nice gold kind of cap at the end right here that looks nice and premium. And then we have these kind of, I wouldn't say recessed, but the buttons themselves are inside. So they're kind of, but on the outside we have this kind of uh, over layer of like silicone plastic to press on the buttons right there to turn the volume up and down. Looks as though this might be the area that has microphone in it too for talking to your friends or your family. This side right here just says wireless stereo. Cable has kind of like a little like groove pattern on it, kind of like a celery stick or something. I don't know if you can see that, it's kind of small. And then of course this is kind of like a like kind of like a stringy noodle. Very comfortable, very flexible. So it's gonna go around your neck and just kind of lay there. And since these right here at the top are kind of weighted, you're not gonna have to worry about them falling off of your neck. I believe it says it's waterproof too, um, to a certain extent most likely. But that means we have this little uh, cover right here made out of plastic. It goes and you push it in here to cover the charging port. So let's say it's raining and you're taking a jog or something, you might be able to do that with these. Don't, don't take my word for it. So easy enough to just plug it in. Unless I'm doing it the wrong way, I always put it in the wrong way. There we go. Then you just plug these into your computer, or if you have another like phone charger laying around. Most likely a 5 volt charge. And then let's get over here to the headphones themselves. Ooh, that's interesting. Look at this. They're magnetic. That's really cool. Yeah, that's really cool. I'm pretty sure those are meant to be magnetic too. I mean, every speaker has a magnet in it, but that's a pretty strong magnet. If you look in here, I don't know if I can get the lighting right, but yeah, there we go. We have like this golden grill. Um, yeah, there we go. We almost got the shine on it. There we go. Right there. There's like a golden kind of grill on the inside of that to uh, keep stuff and debris from your ear getting inside of there or dust. So that's a nice feature. And then we have their symbol right there. Pretty cool design symbol better than some of the other ones that I've seen. Um, I'm sad that these don't retract into here, but, um, you know, it's not that kind of hard, you know, shell design. It's more of a flexible one, so that's probably why you can't do that. But I really liked the other um, ones that I reviewed. I forget what it was by. I think it was like Armone, Ar Armana, or something like that. And they sucked the headphones back up inside of the... Uh, actual band itself, so that was cool. But let's go ahead and turn these on. I'm assuming there's some charge in them, and then sync it to my phone and see how they sound. Assuming it's this one, yep. 
and now we're doing the blink so let's go ahead and grab my phone and sync it and see if we can get some sound out of these guys let's just do some no copyright right here and pulling up some music real quick and let's go ahead and turn up the volume and I'm gonna test out the headphones real quick and let you know how the bass and the sound quality is Wow this has the perfect amount of bass and tempo that is really nice and the band on the back of the neck since it's made out of a silicone type material let's go ahead and put these over here real quick since it's made out of this kind of rubbery silicone material it keeps them nice and cool so it's nice and cold on the back of your neck so you're not going to sweat on these as much let's go ahead and put the speakers right here these next to my microphone and see if you guys can hear the sound Alright, so hopefully you guys were able to hear the music pretty well on there. But yeah, the headphones feel pretty premium, and I'm really excited to start using them. I use these kind of headphones primarily to sleep, because they wrap around your neck, and they stay there all night, and I like listening to white noise while I'm trying to sleep. So, yeah, definitely would recommend them, and I'm going to put them in the link in the description below, so you guys can check them out as well. But yeah, and today we're going to be looking at the Mount Ono Professional Condenser USB Microphone Set. Now this is the AU PM421 version. It's the Professional Audio Innovation Series. And right here, as you can see, it comes with a nice microphone stand that hooks up to your desk, along with a desk kind of stabilizer so you don't get any noise when it shakes, and a pop filter that is also extendable as well. Let's go ahead and turn this around and take a look at the back. If we look right here, it says that its polar pattern is cardioid. It has a frequency response of 20 to 20,000 hertz. It says it is, its sensitivity is minus 47 decibels to 29 decibels plus 3 dB, which I think is 3 decibels. Its bit depth is 24-bit. Sample rate is up to 192 kilohertz. Power requirements is only a USB 5 volt. And then it says SN ratio is 74 dB. And then maximum SPL is 125 dB. And then there's a microphone gain that's a knob, LED indicator, and a USB cable. And then it shows what I mentioned on the front. So it also shows a bunch of features down here as well. But let's go ahead and open the microphone. Let's not spoil everything on the box. Before we do that, this is what the uh, side looks like as well. And the box feels really premium too. So without further ado, let's go ahead and open this up and see what it's all about. This time I'm using my ultra wide angle because this box is really big. So I want to be able to get all of this on uh, the camera. So let's move this back. We tilt it forward right here we get a little card basically saying are you happy with the product. And then right here we have the manual and then we have a little bit of a wind blocker that slides over the microphone itself. This is kind of the same thing as this a little bit for the puzz and the S's and stuff but also if it's really windy outside too if you wanted to use this outside. And then right here we have the pop filter. This is to remove even better all of those P's and S's now, like kind of noises. That's probably what I'm going to be using for uh, my microphone setup because I actually don't have one of those. And if we remove this right here, move that out of the way. Here's the stabilizer. It has like all these shoestringy kind of elastic pieces to kind of help balance it out. It's not really attached to anything besides these, as you can see, because it kind of, uh, the elastic helps absorb the vibration if you hit your desk or, you know, something rumbles. And right here, we have this little thing that you turn, and this goes onto your desk like this. You screw it and it gets really tight on here. 
and then you slide the microphone right here and then tighten it up, the arm right here. And then you can position it any way you want and it's really nice and versatile, these things. I actually have one of those for this microphone and uh, it's nice that I'm going to be able to have a secondary one as well. Give my other one to my fiance so she can use it with the snowball ice. And then it comes with uh, two little things right here of Velcro. So you can kind of cable manage, which is nice. It uses a printer port type cable, pretty decent length as well. And then it comes with these, uh, well this is just the throwaway stuff for oxygen I believe. And then we have the microphone stand itself which expands, and then this portion at the end right here is what goes into the little uh, desk mount. And then we have the thing that screws into the bottom of the microphone. So let's put that out of the way real quick. And then right here, we have the actual microphone. So let's go ahead and move the box out of the way. Slide this little cellophane off of here. And then let's go ahead and zoom in. All right, so this is the look of the microphone. It's a very nice, sleek looking design. And if you notice on the front right here, it actually has a touch screen mute button. So if you wanna mute yourself, if you're on like Discord or maybe you're on stream, you just tap that real quick and it will turn itself off. It also has an adjustable gain right here as well. So if you wanna turn it down or adjust it accordingly, depending on your environment, you can do that as well. And then right down here, we have the connector for the uh, printer kind of port cable. It's very nice and shiny and uh, kind of like really metallic and heavy too, which is nice. It has a good weight to it. It feels premium. And I noticed that uh, you can't see through this. So there's probably a layer of foam in here already. So that already will help get rid of some of those P's and S's noises that sometimes get picked up. I'm kind of wondering how this would be for like karaoke or singing too. But without further ado, let's go ahead and hook this up and then do some microphone tests with it. All right, guys, so I'm just doing an audio test right now that I'm going to be interjecting into the video. This is right now on max gain, and now I'm going to turn it to medium gain. Hello, hello, hello. And then all the way down to low gain. back up to maximum gain and now I'm going to press the mute button to see if it works if you didn't hear me talking that means that it worked and yeah I think that it's really nice um, this is without the pop filter right now so if I did like a pop, pop, s -s, and then I'll put the pop filter in front pop, pop, s -s. so that's the sound of that and yeah, let's go ahead and get back to the video. All right, so that was the audio test and unboxing of the Maono AUPM421 microphone. I think the audio dexterity was pretty much on par with my blue snowball that I use for recording. So I don't know if I'm necessarily going to be swapping them out or not, but I definitely could see myself using this for like singing or something like that, or maybe just uh, streaming or Discord. So yeah. I think that it's pretty good and I'm really excited to own it. And today we're going to be looking at Cup of Doodles. This is a doodle draw and create kit and it's kind of nostalgic, it kind of reminds me of when I was younger. And basically this comes with a little kit of a bunch of stuff that you can do, fill on the lines and I think even uh, connect the dots as well. So without further ado, let's go ahead and open this up and see what comes in this little kit. I love the colorful design. It says the piggy story on the top. I believe that is the brand actually. I'm gonna open this. Comes with a few interesting things in here. Move that to the side. First of all, it comes with a little book it looks like. Oh, so this is pretty cool. I really like alpacas. So if you look right here, it has a whole little kind of color in alpaca like little scene right here with a cute little cactus and uh little kind of wearing sweaters and stuff so that's pretty cool and the back is blank line details done pretty good we have a little bee 
interesting little uh, zigzag lines that you can color in. Like I said, the cactus actually has faces on it. Looks as though everyone's having a conversation of some sort. That guy looks like he has some kind of uh, ear decoration. But yeah, let's move that out of the way. It comes with some cute little crowns. We got a brown, green, blue, purple, red, and a uh, orange. Kind of looks like a pinkish red almost. And then right here it actually kind of shows like the colored in scene, the other uh, page I just showed you guys. And this is actually looks to be a little book. So you can fill in everything right here. We got a copy of, uh, actually no, this is a brand new scene it looks like. I like all of the little smaller details right there. That'll be really interesting to fill in. You know, coloring in the lines is still very, very therapeutic, even if you're, uh, even if you're an adult, it's still very therapeutic. Looks like that guy's got an apple in his mouth. Got some, uh, little guys around here hugging on the llamas. Right here we have a connect the dot, which was one of my favorite things to do as a kid. Um, I wasn't very good at, um you know, drawing, so filling in the dots or connecting them was something I really <laughs> enjoyed doing. And then the next one right here, we have uh, another scene. Looks as though he's talking to the cactus. It says, llamas and herbivores, can you find them a good snack? We're going to give them a uh, turkey drumstick <laughs> and a soda pop. And then this side right here has a, another scene you can fill in. A lot of cactuses mixed in here, kind of interesting. And then the last one, it says, uh, help the llama find clothing. And then it ends right here, and it has the website right there if you want to check it out. Pretty cool. Very nice, very colorful, and very detailed book for coloring in. I'll actually probably take the time to do this, honestly. Like I said, it's very therapeutic, and taking the time to just, you know, enjoy the smaller things is very nice. Another thing this has right here is a little pack of stickers as well, which is really cool. So if we open right here... Looks as though we have multiple little stickers. There's one. We have this one. And then the last one right here. So what's really cool about this, sorry if you can hear my train passing by. We live next to a train and when it's cold, sound waves actually travel farther. So what's really cool about these is this is all just reused drawings. So you get an appreciation of all of the same art but uh, you could see what it looked like if it was actually colored in. It's actually actually pretty cool. I'll probably give these to my fiance because she likes cute little stickers like this. She can put it on uh, some of her computer setup probably. But yeah, I think that this is a really interesting thing, especially if you're an adult and you still enjoy coloring, or if you're still younger and you want to pick this up as well, ask your parents about it. And today we got kind of a novelty funny one. I haven't done one of these in a long time. This is called Handy Cat by, uh, what's that say right there? Archie Mc McPhee? Archie McPhee? So let's go ahead and look at this box. First of all, we have a uh, little bit of a tree and a kind of standard kind of classic, you know, picket fence area. It says on the side right here, Handy Cat. And then on the back, it gives another example of uh, what it's going to look like on the fingers. Let's go ahead and open this up and see what it's all about. So it comes inside of a little plastic packaging. Let's go ahead and pull that out. Looks as though it's kind of uh, stacked in here. We have a little cat head right there. As you guys know, I love cats, so... I'm really excited to uh, try this out. 
gonna be kind of funny. All right, so we have these here now. I'm assuming that I just gotta kind of put these on my fingers. I'm not sure which one's supposed to be the head, though. Um, I think the middle finger is supposed to be the head. Oh no, my finger or my paw is rolling away. So, oh my god. I don't think I did this the right way. <laughs> this is kind of terrifying. <laughs> meow. Meow, meow, meow. <laughs> My paws are literally upside down. I do not think I'm doing this right. Okay, there we go. And then we kind of... I don't know if I can turn my body around. Kind of do it from the front ways. Oh, this is, this is just not right. Oh, man. I have it on manual focus right now so I can get the whole thing in there. So I think right here is clear. Oh, this is so weird. Trying to like ind independently move my fingers. I like he's rocking on. Yeah! <laughs> I'm so sorry. I cannot with this. This is hilarious. Okay, that looks more like a cat. Hold on, hold on. Let me see if I can puppeteer it. Now he's cleaning his face. Huh, hold on, hold on. Oh, this is disturbing. I can't. This is uh, just one of those things that I cannot hold my composure for at all. Yeah, that is uh, that is something. But it looks the most like a cat when you kind of put all your fingers together like that. Very interesting. What do you guys think? I'm kind of getting a kick out of this. Might uh, try to play the piano while wearing this. That'd be interesting. Just kind of be like a like the old style mean piano cat but yeah and today we're going to be looking at the comica professional uh microphone this is a micro directional shotgun microphone or i believe it's a cartoid microphone which uh records in a single direction kind of like a boom mic this is the cvm vm10 2 edition and it comes with a hot shoe mount, which is a mount that goes onto the top of a camera, kind of where the flash goes, so that's pretty cool. Um, if we look at the bottom right here and zoom in a little bit, it says that it works with a smartphone or a camera, and this kind of gives you an idea of the range that it kind of picks up. So if the camera was like right here in the center, it gets a little bit from the back, but mostly everything's from the front. So like if you're interviewing somebody or something like that, it gets a little example of it on a camera too. And if we turn it to the side and focus in on this, it says that it's cardioid for a smartphone slash camera. It's shock absorbing and it's super anti interference and it is mini and full metal which I like that is an example again of what it looks like at the bottom and if you want to pause right here you can get a good look at the specifications but without further ado let's go ahead and unbox this and see what it's all about so it has a little bit of tape right here so this is what the inside packaging looks like go ahead and turn it this direction and it should slide out pretty easily. Let's go ahead and pop that to the side. There we go. So uh, as we see on the front, it already comes with a bunch of cool stuff in here. So let's slide this extra piece of plastic out of here so we can actually get a good look at that. Looks as though I just dropped the instruction manual. Move that out of the way. And if we tilt this down, you can see that it comes with a few different connectors. The first one it looks like is a standard uh, one that goes into uh, any kind of normal headphone jack. And then this one right here looks as though it has uh, three on here. One's for a microphone and then I'm not sure what this one does. I think one goes into here and then one goes into the smartphone. And then we have this really nice kind of uh, fuzzy muff right here and this is used for when it's really windy outside it also has a little plastic ring too so it's not just the fabric it'll slide inside of there there's also foam in there as well so if you're having like a really windy day or something and you want to take this outside you can actually do that with this little uh what my mom would call poison packages or silica 
And then right here we have the microphone itself, which looks uh, really nice and uh, has a decent weight to it. It's not uh, really cheap feeling. This feels like it's made out of a uh, plastic, which is springy to uh, shock absorb, I believe. We can also take this off right here and take a little bit of a zoom in. And then this is what the microphone looks like. Has a little bit of a grill right there and on this side and then the other side as well. It says right here, video microphone and gives the model number. And then it says Comica. Looks as though you can mount it via a standard tripod or you can also mount it um, using the hot shoe mount, which is really nice. Very versatile in that way because a lot of the stuff that I use requires that. So yeah, let's go ahead and slide this little uh, foam protector on here, or the pa and z kind of blocker. And let's go ahead and attach it and see if we can get some good sounds out of it. All right, so I'm recording with the uh, Kamika microphone. I'm about the same distance as I would normally record using my blue snowball. So this is about, uh, I'd say about mm, 10 inches from my mouth, about 10 to 12 inches from my mouth. And I'm going to lean back in my chair, talking at the same volume, leaning back in my chair. And now I'm going to talk really close up to it as well. But this microphone is usually used to um, get a pretty farther distance away. So if you're like uh, sitting maybe a few feet away, um, I'm going to go ahead and put on the wind muff now and see how it sounds. So this is the sound with the little uh, furry wind blocker on. Um, not a super fair test, given the fact that it is um, inside and it's not windy outside even. Um, but yeah, I think that uh, it looks pretty nice on there. It looks pretty professional, and I'm excited to see how the audio turned out. All right, so I'm back on my blue snowball. A little cool thing that I did is I had a mount a tripod mount and I actually put it on this uh, little clamp mount that is super strong has a nice uh, spring in there and you actually can clamp it pretty good against your desk or anything else and it uh, the ball and socket is pretty solid once you tighten it up but yeah the quality is not too bad getting up close you do get some pops and stuff I think that filter that I have on there kind of helped with that but uh, all in all, I think it's a good quality microphone for uh, pretty much what it's going to be used for, which would be kind of like interviews or a little bit, you know, a few feet away kind of uh, situations. But for recording how close I do, I kind of need that extra bit of uh, flexibility. Very nice. I like it a lot. And uh, yeah, I'll be putting this in the link in the description below so you guys can check it out as well. And today's going to be a really short video, but I wanted to show you guys this really cute Sumiko Garashi folder I was sent by Modes for You. And Modes for You is a company based in Hong Kong. They do Japanese imports and distribute internationally. So I'll put them in the link in the description below. But as you know, I've reviewed many gotcha little plush Sumiko Garashi merchandise in the past. So when I had the option to choose to order this from them as a sample product, I was really happy. So let's go ahead and zoom in on here real quick. You see a lot of the familiar characters from the boxes, from the little gotcha boxes. I actually got that one right there. And the story behind these guys is that they're all kind of trash food, or the parts of the food that we don't eat that get thrown out and uh, they turned them into characters. So this is a shrimp tail right there. And I was actually uh, informed, oh, I was informed by one of my subscribers about that a while ago. So I thought that was a really cute idea. We have some more over here. Everyone's kind of sitting together. Eating some kind of Probably not a hot dog, but to me it looks like a hot dog. If you know what that is, let me know in the uh, description below, or the comments. Looks like we got like a little ice cream thing here, a little marketplace right there. And then there's a little dinosaur, I believe I got that one too. I think that looks like a ghost almost up there. But yeah, this is the folder right here. And then this is what the backside looks like. Very nice, cute little design. Everyone's sitting on a table and eating. Looks like a little rice ball right there. 
they're playing with a little uh, sports ball or a, what do they call those beach balls yeah and then if we want to take a look at more of the technicals of the folder it has tabs right here for you to be able to separate your work so it has up to five tabs in here so you can definitely uh, put all your stuff separate it nice and have yourself a really nice cute folder to keep with you and yeah sorry I can't really get the whole thing on my camera at once it's a pretty pretty decent sized folder but uh, let's see if we can get a good zoom in on the top right there top to the bottom and this is what it looks like very cute I'm gonna be giving this to my fiance maybe she can keep some more work documents in there really 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 like this and uh, just wanted to show you guys a huge shout out to my patreons thank you guys so much for your support you guys are awesome if you enjoyed the video don't forget to comment rate and subscribe and as always i'll see you in the next video